I hate driving in the snow. And for you that have driven with me, and you know who you are, you know I don't even like to drive, nor am I really that good at it. So in January, I took one of my inaugural snowboarding journeys, but this time I said, why fly to Denver and drive to Breckenridge when I can visit my friend in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and drive to Breckenridge? It all made sense at the time. So my friend, Matt, happens to be a recruiter, an admissions officer for a technical college in Denver. He recruits mechanics and um, diesel engineers to go to school and get a job. So we're driving along on a trip that's seven hours long without snow or traffic. I think you see where this is going, right? So into the drive, we stop in Chama, New Mexico. Anyone ever been? It's literally in the middle of nowhere. And we pull up to Escalante High School. And in the window, you could see the 50 or 60 kids that go to Escalante High School waiting for Matt and I to come in. Matt gets up there and does this amazing speech about, you know, getting, getting a place at bat and swinging the bat and all these things. I didn't expect to participate. And he said, well, Rob Humphrey's here with LinkedIn. So I'm staring at these kids and All I could think to say was, just dream big. And what I found was, literally, I really meant it. Like, I, I fully connected with the whole dream big thing. So then, a few hours later, four hours later, my friend pulls over. It's snowing like crazy. And the snowboarder in me is like, yes, pow day. I'm going to be slashing the powder all day tomorrow. I couldn't even see the moose that was crossing over as my friend goes into the liquor store to get a bottle of Tito's. He gets back to the car and says, Rob, you're driving. I'm not a good driver. So I'm driving along. Finally, as he's sleeping and snoring away, I literally had a moment of complete clarity, total clarity. And I'm not trying to go new age on you. Essentially, I knew what my mission was pretty much in life. I wanted to inspire as many students as I possibly can in the time that I'm on earth. So I'm going along um, with this idea that all of you might be able to connect to this vision because, you know, as a salesperson, I'm rarely in a meeting thinking to myself, I need to understand John Lucy's goals and his KPIs. I know what they are. I know what Megan Burke at eCornell is interested in. I know all those metrics. All of us salespeople at LinkedIn and Marketing Solutions know that. What I want to know is what do you all want to ultimately accomplish? So I'm going to take you on a quick journey to three states and tell you three tips that can help you inspire students, your employees, or even yourself. Simple tips that you can carry with you. And I want to start in Tempe, Arizona, home of the Sun Devils, right? So I find myself getting ready to do a talk to 300 business school students, but not yet. I've got a team now. Right? I've been a lone wolf for years, but now I've got this team. So naturally, I take them on the usual stops in Tempe. Right? Number one, you go to the normal diner as soon as you get off the plane and you get velvet waffles and coffee. Number two, you take a ride with me in an A4 silver car, an Audi, through a bunch of alleyways looking for street art. And lo and behold, you find street art everywhere. It's everywhere. And this is my favorite piece by an ASU graduate, a bachelor's in fine arts graduate, that makes her living, makes her dream living, doing murals and running a gallery. And this is called Don't Wake the Dreamer. I'm doing this talk, and the tip number one that I want to give you is put skills on your profile. And I tell this to students, Every time, I'm sitting there in front of all these students, just like you all, by the way, 
because not a single person has the skill I'm about to talk about. And the one woman in the room that has the data presenta presentation skill on her LinkedIn profile is Renu Kokar. And not only does she have it on there, but she has a visualization of data as her cover photo on her profile. A plus, A plus, A plus. I mention this skill because it's the number eight skill in our annual list of skills that get people hired. And I'm so excited to see this list grow out of the usual suspects, Python programming, C++ programming, all the stuff that Tomer does, you know what I mean? And have all kinds of different things on the list, like campaign management, things that Owen knows, um, and uh, um, uh, digital marketing tools. And number eight, data presentation. So get this on your, get this skill, either get it, put it on your profile, or encourage and inspire your students to do it. Next stop is Chapel Thrill, home of the NCAA championship basketball team. Go Tar Heels. Also home to one of the ultimate potential interns that you could have, my son, J.D. Humphrey. Look him up. <laughs> He really is an amazing kid. He's got such a good heart. He's so smart. Y'all should hire him. <laughs> but what I found most interesting is I did a talk, a workshop, with my team, and I ran to this guy, Kevin Stevens. And I'm sitting there listening to him tell me all the intricacies of our interaction design and why our UX is so flawed. And I said, listen, I'm... I'm doing what I do to my wife and half listening to you, and I apologize for that. I'm kind of tuning you out. And he says to me, well, this is really important. I said, it is important. And when do you, when do you expect to interview with these companies you're interested in? He's like, I want to work at LinkedIn. I said, okay, imagine yourself at the interview table, right, or in the line at the career fair, or whatever it is. And you've written this article on LinkedIn, and it says exactly what he wrote, by the way, 10 UX flaws that can be easily repaired on LinkedIn. I'm looking at the article the same day, and Kevin LeVay, who I don't even know, he's one of our senior veteran UX engineers at LinkedIn. He likes it. Then he sends Rob Humphrey an email and says, I want to connect with you, and I want to thank you for encouraging Kevin to write that article. Because these things are easily fixed, and I've been talking to my boss about them for a year, and I'm happy you did it. So Kevin essentially has a bunch of likes on this article. But they're not just likes. They're leads. They're leads for a job at LinkedIn and Amazon and all of the other people that have liked this post. And it's also therapy for him because he's an engineer displaying leadership skills and a proud MBA candidate at Keenan Flagler. We also notched it up a little bit. and We did a LinkedIn day. You should talk to your reps about this. This is a new thing we're doing. We had a complete experience for all students at Chapel Hill. And essentially what we did was hundreds of profile reviews. We took uh, professional headshots in front of the old well and other iconic um, uh, venues. We went ahead and did talks uh, to several student groups, both of them Game of Thrones themed, and I'm pretty sure I scared the shit out of a lot of people. But I had fun doing it. I had a lot of fun doing it. The most interesting thing I did was get someone to actually create a profile, Taylor Gosk. And this woman is a freshman at Carolina, and long story short, her mom's in the career services group. And I said, hey, I need someone, I need a victim. Because I don't just wanna make sure this person has an amazingly cool background photo representing the school, right? I wanna make sure they have a full profile and I wanna do it live in front of the whole 300 people that came to the presentation, which I did. Demonstrating the four skills that Jeff Salingo says everyone should have in a five minute critique of her profile. So the next skill, complete a profile. If you just get your students, or you just get your, even your prospective students with the notion of creating a profile on LinkedIn, 
That's the only tip you need to take home. Very, very simple. I rounded out my trip in Ithaca, and you saw this coming. Before I had started working with Cornell and now Ithaca, Co- Ithaca College, um, I hadn't been to Ithaca in, let's say, a couple decades, okay? Um, we naturally stopped at the usual venues. The Argos Bar, where DJ Shea could have his Iris Teeling whiskey, and me, I go to the shop down around the corner from there where you can get a tattoo and have an espresso. Of course, there's amazing street art in Ithaca, right? And it is a complete place of wonderment, right? As depicted in the the, uh, mural of the same name. And then we went up to the other hill, to the B School, the SC Johnson College of Business. And we did a talk to 300 MBAs. And we had such a good time. We basically said to them, winter is here, and there's three types of relationships that exist, right? And there are. There are people who are your allies, your ride or dies. There are people that are loose connections that become very, very, have a lot of utility. And then there's people that want to slash your throat. So I ran into someone that was really interesting in taking tip two to heart, publishing on LinkedIn, the biggest opportunity for everybody. And I've mentioned it in the last three talks that I've done. Um, Nadia Zaman. So she said to me, Rob, I'm interviewing with Amazon. And Amazon is sucking everybody, like all the MBAs out of every elite business school. It's fascinating. I'm so excited for Amazon. So she said, I'm going I'm to need to get my act together here. And I said, well, what's that going to look like? They're going to come to your campus? What, what is it? Well, you line up, you get your interview slot, and you go in. I said, well, what if you were like, This guy at uh, Carolina, I just met Kevin, who wrote an article effectively writing himself himself into a job. What if you did that in advance of the interview? You show up, and maybe you analyze Amazon's marketing strategy or give him some cool novel ideas, which is exactly what she did. She wrote an article in advance of her interview, basically saying, listen, the opportunity for an online pharmacy is amazing, and here is my analysis and my sort of take. In addition, when cannabis becomes legalized around the country, there's another opportunity that's waiting in the wings for Amazon. And all I could think about was, imagine a drone like flying into your backyard, and it has your Xanax and your Sativa. And I was thinking, if I were interviewing her, how badass that would be. So. If I could just leave you with these three tips, they would be get your students to write their way in, create a profile, and plug in the skills. And the last thing I want to say is this. I've read all of the materials from the day. And the one thing that struck me me is becoming a strategic pillar in your institution. I disagree with it. I think you are the strategic pillar in your organization, in your school or institution. You all are the organizational pillars. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.